of borrowing, road construction, and general government activities in the state. On the sidelines, we'll also look at the attempt to rebuild the main opposition uh, party, the People's Democratic Party in Abia State, after their poor outing in the last general election. Welcome once again. We'll take a breather now to bring you the political update. When we come back, the show continues. Still is. All right, thank you so much, Wisdom, for that update. Welcome back to the program. It's still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussion. And like I told you before, we went on that break. I told you we'll look at government activities, governance generally in Abbey State. Uh, we'll look at all that. And uh, joining me to talk about this issue is a former commissioner here in Abbey State, former commissioner for trade and investment, and also former commissioner for information, Chief John Oki Carlo. He joins me virtually this morning. Thank you so much, Chief. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Yenika. Good morning, wonderful people of Fabia State. All right. Uh, it's been long we heard your voice. Uh, nice to hear you again. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think we should just start with uh, your party, the People's Democratic Party. Maybe you just bring us up to speed as regards the issue of rebuilding of your political party, the PDP, after that poor outing in the 2023 general election in Abia State. How is the, uh, I mean, rebuilding those that sabotage the party? You know, you are preparing for a national convention as well. Have you also done World Congress, local government, and even the state? Just bring us up to speed as to what is happening with your party and the state. Thank you very much, uh, Genica. First, uh, uh, if you will permit, I want to once more use this opportunity to appeal to Governor Lesotho to please make urgent and critical interventions to save our people from hunger. Mm. Widely available reports, particularly from our communities, indicate that a lot of people are dying from hunger. And there is the need for targeted government response to ease the pains of our people, even if it's going to be for the next six months, mm -hmm. so that people can stabilize and uh, we will continue to push forward. I have um, outlined a few things that, in my view, mm -hmm. uh, we will need to do uh, from the end of the government for us to have a good handle of the situation. I understand that it is not the governor's uh, Indeed, that caused this level of hunger is a national challenge, but it is also the responsibility of the governor and the government in Abia State to take specific measures to protect the people. Labor state government has done so, many state governments have done so. There is need for our own state governor to also um, act decisively. When we had the challenge from um, COVID-19 in 2020, we, you were all witnesses to the interventions of the administration of that era to make sure that uh, the life of our people uh, were saved from hunger and uh, indeed the rampaging uh, pandemic. So I want to appeal to the governor that this might well be the first major challenge of his administration to save Abias from dying from hunger. And you will need to act decisively in this direction to inject money to the grassroots, remove some of the taxes and maybe pull back all the towns that are on our street, uh, oppressing our people. Consider uh, removing market levies and all the other levies like um, the daily toll and other targeted at uh, the poor mm. and concentrate more on corporate taxes so that we'll be able to save lives as much as possible. Having said that, um, I, I, I beg to uh, be a little bit uh, different or take a different direction from what you started with, that my party performed poorly. Yes, we did not perform to our own high standards, mm -hmm. but as of today, we have the majority of members in the state as of assembly. They were all elected the same day with the governor. We lost the governorship, but we have the majority of members in the state house of assembly. We have a senator of PDP. The party that produced the governor does not have a senator of their party. We have House of Rep members 
in PDP. Um, yes, the performance is not up to what we would normally do, but it, it is not as poor as advertised. And uh, I recognize that, yes, uh, as part of the lead up to that particular election, mm. some of our members, particularly our uh, leading members, had reasons. Mm. Uh, to disagree with a few things happening internally. Some had reasons to go rogue on the party uh, as a result of their personal grievances. Uh, some others repeated what they will always do in every election cycle. There are people that in every election cycle will find reason to betray the party and all that. But more importantly, um, the party is undergoing internal cleansing. Okay. A lot of those people uh, responsible for those uh, uh, adverse behavior are leaving the party voluntarily. Okay. They are going to other parties, and it is hoped that when they go to other parties, they will also behave the same way they behave with people. Mm. Because, uh, like my people would say, uh, somebody who has a running stomach will always go to the toilet mm. as many times as possible. That's what we say in Africa language. So a betrayer is a betrayer. No matter where he is, it's just a matter of time for the characteristics to manifest. But for those who are fidel, and if you look at the PDP, we still retain our core leader. Mm. We still have Dr. KG Tazo on board. Mm. We have Oche Duki Oji on board, fully on board. We have Raton uh, Ebudo Kochuku on board. We have uh, Nayonye Mukochuku on board. Almost all our key leaders are still on board with the party. And we have the majority of our members. This is at the grassroots level, mm. uh, where you have uh, elected representatives of the people. So if you look at it uh, all around, the party is largely intact. There is a senator, Ponela mm. Kobondo. The party chairman is still intact. A lot of the uh, majority of the party, executives, the state working committee members are still intact. But that does not mean that uh, we do not uh, have to go through this internal cleansing. We'll go through it and we'll come out even stronger. We have learned from uh, some of our own internal mistakes. Definitely there were mistakes at different levels uh, of the party and at different levels of leadership. Uh, but uh, we cannot say that uh, we are not uh, in a position to quickly come back design a new agenda that will speak to what Avians wants at this time okay. and execute that so that uh, we'll have a better idea. Okay. So, uh, in other words, you are getting set for your national convention, which is coming up. Uh, has the date been fixed yet? No. Uh, and, um, of course, before we will have a national convention, it is the tradition in PDP to go through the Congress. Yeah. From the world level, you will elect the world leader go to the local government level to elect local government leaders before you come to the state level mm -hmm. and then all those elected uh, party executives will now join the national convention okay. to elect the national leaders of the party we are yet to take off in that direction uh, we are waiting news from the national office uh, it might be a little bit delayed remember that um in 2020, COVID-19 delayed our World Congress, our, our State Congress. Mm. We we executed the World Congress, but could not execute the State and National Congress okay. on time. Mm. It was delayed till I think it was August that we executed the State Congress, and then sometime in October, November, we executed the National Congress or National Convention as the case is. So. We are not yet there, but the fact is that there are valid executives in place. And according to the tradition of our people, if we have to transmute them on interim basis to mm. become, you know, acting yes. executives, okay. they are already there. The practice within PDP is to just uh, convert them from elected to acting, depending when we will conduct uh, congresses and the convention of the party. Okay. Now, moving on, let's look at the issue of uh, governance in Abia State. Yesterday, uh, the news dropped that the Abia State House of Assembly has actually repealed the law, giving the state government the powers to pay governors and their deputies pension in Abia State after leaving office. 
Uh, would you say that this particular move uh, made by the State House of Assembly was a good one or not, Chief? Thank you very much. Uh, the law establishing the so-called pension for mm -hmm. former governors and their deputies was made under Senator Jules Ocalo's administration. Yes. And um, Senator Jules Ocalo is of the APC. Mm -hmm. Now, what I know, for instance, is that Senator T. A. Oji Ochendu has not received one kobo as pension from anybody. Mm. I also know that Governor OKG Ipazo has not received one kobo as pension from anybody. And in fact, Governor Ipazo has not applied to anybody to mm. pay him any pension because he has moved on, he is taking care of himself, he is um, working very hard for himself, he is doing a lot of work to earn a living, and uh, he is not particularly excited about the pension law. Uchen the period is also not particularly excited about the pension law. Mm. So when you look at it, it's more or less like um Are you uh, saying that that, law, law, that law, law is docile? A law that has a law that has been redundant, mm. so to speak, being repealed. Mm. If it has pleased the House of Assembly to revoke the law, it was also the House of Assembly in those days that made the law. So they had the right to revoke it. But what I found interesting was that that law was not, the revocation was not properly debated at the House of Assembly yesterday. And it is an abiding challenge in other states' House of Assembly. When the speaker goes to somewhere in Uvose, takes instructions, he's jittering. He doesn't want others to contribute. Yesterday, when he came back to the House, if I am correct, he introduced, he himself, his deputy, and I think the majority leader were the only people allowed to speak. The people from PDP were not recognized to speak. See, did, did they the actually, speaker, did they make any move to speak and they were yes, denied? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And another problem we find is that <laughs> when you say voice votes to repeal a bill, I find this a little bit interesting. Why it is part of legislative rule to use voice votes, it is important to know that there are certain votes that you will have to divide the house. What we mean by division of the house includes that people will turn their position down so that you will know who voted for what. Mm. When you say uh, uh, I and, and people say I, and another group say no, you say the I have it. As if you have measured the volume of the voices of the dissenting and assenting group only. But meanwhile, here you are revoking a law. You should divide the house. It is also unfortunate that the current Adia State House of Assembly is operating in abeyance. That house, as far as I know, from the little I know. Hmm. Hello, Chief. Oh, okay. I think uh, we lost uh, Chief uh, uh, Oki Carlo there. Oh actually take a breather now to see if we can re-establish link with uh, chief john oki carlo the former commissioner for trade and investment here in abia state i think we have him back now chief can you hear me yes i can hear you okay you can go ahead so so i was saying mm. that that house as far as i know mm. and lawyers can bear me out mm. is operating in illegality and i'll tell you two reasons number one a house where minority members occupy the position of majority leader is actually operating against legislative rule and does not exist in law. So the House of Assembly, including the decisions they are taking today, is operating in illegality. And I've been pointing this thing out so that people will correct it before somebody will go and sue and nullify everything they have done, including the budget, mm. the revocation, the things they have Chief, passed. It will happen. Honorable Commissioner, no, when, when, when you say that the uh, that house is uh, illegally or uh, whatever, I mean, they have the uh, speaker there who was elected by his colleagues. The deputy speaker is also there, elected by his colleagues. And you have the majority leader and other uh, house members. So uh, if you say they are not... You know, they are acting in abeyance. I wonder what you mean exactly. Let me, let me explain it. Okay. 
in all houses of assembly, including the ones, all legislative houses, including the one you have in U.S., you have in other states, to occupy the seat of majority leader is strictly for the party that has the highest number of members. In the U.S. Congress, the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is not more than, I think it's shrinking to about eight. Yes, the Republicans, by virtue of their majority membership, must produce the majority leader mm -hmm. and, of course, the speaker. Now, you can speak to members of the National Assembly for Madia State. They mm -hmm. will tell you that the mere fact that somebody from a minority party is the majority leader of that house nullifies everything they are doing. Number two, in the same House of Assembly, the appeal court, which is the final court on, legis on legislative mm -hmm. election issues, who that Aaron Ozodike is the validly elected what? member representing what? a Banner State Constituent. Good. We will come to that uh, because we have. Uh, no, I, you, I, we are talking about illegality. Yes. I thought you would allow me no, to speak yes, to you, you illegality. Will, sure, you will. But I, I want us to dispense uh, this particular issue of uh, the pension to governors and their deputies you know you said you were sure that uh, TLG did not receive pension and uh, yeah. your boss also did not receive amino kz puzzle can you say same of uh, gov uh, former governor uh, OUK or juzo carlo because TA was the governor at the time. if actually he paid pension to OUK i do not know hmm. that is the much i can tell you i know about Ochen. Because while Ochendo was senator, mm. and for the eight years of OKG Pazu, he was a senator, Ochendo never applied for or requested for any pension, and he was not receiving any. Okay. I know that in the early part of the OKG Pazu administration, that Senator uh, Ojuns or Carlo wrote and requested for pension payment, but I do not know whether he was paid or not. Mm. I am very confident. I'm totally sure that Governor Ezekiel has never written Dr. Alessio to ask for pension. And he is not interested in receiving any pension from anybody. It was not his administration that made the law. It is unfortunate that we have a government that prioritizes propaganda. So they are going about saying Ezekiel, others, blah, 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 mm -hmm. as if Ezekiel ever requested for pension. I challenge the government to publish any notification given to them on pension payments in Paris. I'm okay. very sure he okay. is not interested in receiving any pension. Mm. He has moved on. Okay, so probably he may not even have issues okay. with repealing of that particular law. Well, now... Sure. Okay, so now let's talk about the legality you were making emphasis on that is going on in the Abia State House of Assembly. Uh, I know that, yes, the Court of Appeal actually ruled that a member of the People's Democratic Party should be the lawmaker that should be inaugurated for a ban not state constituency. That is the Honorable Aaron Uzodike. But uh, the, the worrisome part of it is that your party, the PDP, appears not to be interested in pushing further. Ever since you issued uh, that statement, uh, you know, and nothing came out of it, you relaxed. Is it that you are now uh, in bed with what is happening at the State Assembly? Otherwise, why are you not pushing to make sure that your member is inaugurated? I can assure you that we did not relax. Um, if I may, I can tell you that we have petitioned the National Assembly directly. The uh, President has been petitioned, President Bola Tinubu. The uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria, the Chief Judge of Nigeria, has a petition. We are also mobilizing uh, lawyers, and any moment from now, we are going to commit certain persons for contempt of court. I understand that the last time that matter was going to be treated by the appeal court, that the Attorney General of Adia State, uh, came to do one or two things. Mm. I am surprised that an attorney general who is supposed to protect the rule of law left Omoa here, came to Abuja to do one or two things in 
furtherance of disobedience to the law. Mm. My worry is that it has nothing. It has nothing to do with OJDK. Mm. It has more to do with setting of precedent. Whether we like it or not, Governor Nsoc will not be the governor of Abia State forever. Mm. It's fair to check him now. Whoever becomes governor after him, whether in four years or in eight years, will also point us to the fact that he refused to swear in somebody from another party. But and chief, that person will perpetrate the same thing. Is that uh, fair on the governor? Could he be the one that actually asked the speaker not to swear him in? I mean, he's not a member of the Abia State House of Assembly. So, what is his concern? Let me, in, in I, am, his concern? I am in public now. Okay. And you know when I speak, I'm sure you are used to the fact that when I speak, I speak from fact. Hmm. After Ozo DK was given certificate of return with the, the CTC of his judgment, he submitted this document to the House of Assembly to the office of the clerk. Hmm. The current speaker, Emerowa, hmm. Minister on it that he was going to be inaugurated December 18th. Okay. He received instructions from the governor. And it was torpedoed. You, you, have, may not, you have facts to this uh, because uh, I that's a serious allegation. Go back. Let me give you the facts. Mm. Go to the office of the clerk. Ask him to give you the original document brought by Ozo DK. You will see where MF the inauguration for 18th of December. Okay. Now go and ask Emerowa who made him not to do it. And also ask him why is the House of Assembly using ways and means to pay a legislator that has already been sacked by the court hmm. using the cover you, of security votes you, you, and funding you, from the office of the speaker. You have the so fact that somebody you have the fact that somebody who has been sacked by the court is still receiving all his entitlement as a lawmaker, chief. I am not I do not know of all his entitlement. Hmm. My statement does not border on all his entitlement. It borders on giving him money. Money for, for what? Personal exactly? maintenance. I mean as if he was a member of the house. And the man is still claiming that he's still the house member. I saw in his social media post. Does he it's attend city? Uh, Chief, it's good we interrogate all these things. When so, when you say somebody said he claims, I can claim to be a member of the house, but am I really a member of the house? Do I attend city? Now, am I recognized as a lawmaker? Much, thank you very much. When you make a false claim hmm. in law, I hope you know it's justifiable. Hmm. It is not just a matter of I can claim to be. The fact is that if you've made a false claim, it's justifiable. Knowing the facts to be false, and you are making that claim. It's justifiable. And at social media, he claimed to still be the House member. And we have abundance of facts pointing to some payments coming from the Speaker to him. Mm. For whatever reason. Because whatever security vote the Speaker has is for him and the members of the House. So, uh, Chief, for him with that. So, Whether it is 8 million they are giving mm. him monthly, so it is for him. You, and current members of the house so you are saying for a fact that the former lawmaker who was sacked by the court of appeal is still receiving some amount of money from the abia state house of assembly as a kind of through entitlement the, through the speaker through the speaker through the speaker you have the, the name fact? of the speaker mm. is Emero okay let's move on now now your 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 member i mean uh, Aaron Uzodike, when you said it doesn't really have to do with him i mean he is the one that will be inaugurated. Why is he not speaking out? Because we are also getting feelers that it could be that he's having some kind of deals with Labour Party. I don't know if you've heard that as well. Aaron knows that DK does not have any deal with anybody. And what kind of deal will you have not to be inaugurated and remain at home more than three months after you were pronounced the winner? If he's going to have a new deal, that deal will come into effect like, when he becomes a member of the house, correct? Mm. Oh, he can, he's not receiving any money from Major State Government. He has never received shishi from Governor Lesotho or, or from uh, Emeroa. Mm. So what kind of deal will he be having? He does not have any deal. The fact is that 
he sought to pursue this matter legally. And I'm telling you that the Attorney General of Abiyase was in Abuja to torpedo the matter. And I am saying to the Attorney General, if he's listening to me, that what he did is not right. He might be serving a Labour Party government, but by virtue, his office is one of the few cabinet positions found in the Constitution. Because he is expected to be protected by the Constitution and to act in protection of the Constitution. Okay. When you fly from Abia to come to Abuja to do this and that, to torpedo a process that, in fact, that process shouldn't have been filed at the issue. Mm -hmm. What should have just happened is uh, Ozodike should have been inaugurated. Step on, and that's it. That is the way it works. Even at the federal level, okay. members of Labour Party that were uh, given the nod by the court were inaugurated. Okay. Well, Chief, uh, we'll look at all that things uh, when we come back from this break. It's still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussion. My guest is a former Commissioner for Trade and Investment and also former Commissioner for Information here in Abia State, Chief John Okikal. We are looking at governance uh, and government activities in Abia State. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. All right. So welcome back to the program. It's still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussion. We are looking at governance generally in Abia State. And my guest is a former commissioner for information and former commissioner for trade and investment here in Abia State, Chief John Okiikalo. Welcome back to the program, Chief. Now, uh, thank you very much. Good. Now, I, I want us to look at another issue bordering on governance. Uh, some of the political allies of the former governor, OKZ Pazo, uh, have been accused of looting government property. The letter has been. Uh, a very close ally of the governor, Raymond Aliga, whose uh, property in Omaha has been sealed. Uh, how would you react to this? Thank you for raising that issue. Um, when people say political ally, mm. I don't understand because Raymond Aliga, I know, is a businessman. He never served in government at any point in time. He never took any appointment from the government of Dr. J.J. Bazo of which I was a part of for eight years. But he's very he was a very Raymond close Aliga associate. An investor. Mm. Huh? He, he was a very close associate of the governor at the time. Say that he was a friend of the governor. Okay. They were friends long before the governor became governor. Okay. Area, both of them are from Obingwa. Mm. I recall that even after 2014, when the Bazo campaign was about to be launched, uh, that uh, the initial place where we were meeting was in Raymond Allegra's office along Park Road. Mm. Raymond has always been a businessman and an investor. Okay. He is also the same person behind the multidisciplinary center in Obinqua. He has a lot of investments in Abia and in Lagos. So when you now narrow it down as if to say that he ever had any public office, I don't understand. Now, regarding the property in question mm. that uh, you are referring to, yeah. I am personally aware mm. that uh, uh, Chief Aliga bought that property from a third party. He bought it not from government, but from the owner. And the intention was to build a business complex there. The government has not said I mean now, the government of Alex Oti mm. did not say that they revoke the C of O because it is government property. I have not heard that from them. They have also not said that they revoke the C of O because he stole government money to buy it. So, everyone will have to wait to know why the government decided to revoke, particularly when this is a government that is going to Lagos, Abuja, New York, uh, Malaysia, and everywhere to get people to invest in Abia. And then a citizen of Abia who is an investor, you are revoking his sea of all. Not knowing, not realizing that you are sending negative signal to other investors. One of the things investors fear is instability in government policy. If a governor can wake up and revoke the CFO of a property without giving cogent reasons. 
What that says to investors is it is not safe to buy land in Nadia. It is not safe to put your factory in Nadia. It is not safe to put your hotel in Nadia. And I want to ask the government to fully consider if they have specific security reasons why they have done what they have done, outside vendetta, outside vengeance, outside bitterness and rancor. They should say so to the people of Adia so that we will now understand. But if it is still in pursuit of the usual uh, agenda of the OT administration to humiliate friends and family members of OKG Pazo, what I will say to him is Chineke Paragi today. Okay, but, uh, Chief, let us look at you, you talked about investors coming into the state to invest, and uh, with such development, they may get discouraged. So, that particular property belonging to Alega, is it? Uh, a kind of commercial property or is it a, a personal house of his? It is not even a house, it's a land. A land where he wanted to build a business complex. You see, there is a lot of unnecessary vendetta going on. The other day you heard that uh, the government has uh, returned uh, the Asian by Economic City land to the owners. What they did not tell you was what transpired between the governor of Adia State of Dallas City and the prime mover of Aiming by Economic City, Dave Alonso. We are aware of what happened between the two of them. What, what happened? Even Tell with us. what happened, even with what happened, the mm. governor must realize that that project, Francis de Alonso, it is a national project with investment of 20 percent by the federal government you cannot just torpedo it because the man refused to agree to your terms whatever your terms are what you are doing is to again send wrong signal to investors in our state people know this that also i'm sure knows people who know people and he will also tell them the union by economic city was done because of XYZ. Mm -hmm. And these are the same people you want to attract to Asia to come and invest. Well, Chief, I am going to live on Aliga. Mm -hmm. We we'll also tell people that he knows. When he bought that the governor revoked, mm -hmm. that that was where he was planning to build a business complex, and that it was done mainly because he's an associate or a friend of former governor. KJ I want to appeal to the governor once more. Mm -hmm. You are now the governor of Adia State. Please do not allow anger and bitterness to drive your decisions. Whatever is done in anger cannot be the right thing. Okay. Be very sensitive to business investment. Be very sensitive to treating investors no matter who is involved. Okay. So I am saying to you that contrary to what you people believe, mm -hmm. it was not a house that he lives in or that he does business in that has been revoked. It is somewhere he wants to build a business complex. Okay, so the government Chief, has revoked. Chief, I, I still want to take you back to the issue of economic, uh, uh, that uh, Union by Economic City that uh, your principal actually proposed at some point uh, during his tenure. You said something transpired between the governor and the owner of that land. Tell us more because it's all about audience, and audience will want to know. Actually, Agoge, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Mm. You will recall that Indian by Economic City was one of the best advertised and sold projects. Mm. It cost $1.7 million to design the plan for that city. And that plan won awards, mm. even in U.S., mm. for how comprehensive it was. You will recall that the federal government invested 20% of the shares. Mm -hmm. And the money was in Central Bank. The same money that they said at a point that the Sikazo has swallowed. Mm -hmm. Only to find out that the Central Bank never released that money to the government of Asia State. We will recall that there are approvals of a free trade zone license within the Indian by Economic City uh, program. There is also an inland port within the Indian by Economic City. Uh, hello, Chief. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. You were making a point. So, all the licenses were duly approved by the federal government, the government of President uh, Mohamed Kouare. Mm -hmm. I was in Asorok the day the final documentation and approval was done by President Buhari. I recall that it was the Attorney General 
but the senior Edward that represented the government of Abia State. Okay. Uh, Chief Dan also represented uh, by Economic City mm. promoters, mm. and then the federal government signed. See, that project was never meant to immediately become structures. Mm. It needed some investment. I recall that part of what investors demanded for was steady power supply. Okay. It was for that reason that Governor Pazo took Professor Barton at your geometrics mm. to China, to one of the biggest groups in China, Ruili Group. Mm. During that meeting, I recall that the Ruili Group mm. requested that we be allowed to invest in the gas aspect of the power generation business. Okay. In fact, they were ready to pay an initial $1.5 billion the federal government in view of that investment. And they were also ready to invest over a $100 million in the power generation company called Geometrics or ABA IPP, ABA Independent Power Project. Yes. The problem was it wasn't within the purview of Professor Barton Naji mm. to give what they need from the gas generation aspect. It was from there that they now Governor Barton Naji okay. who indeed is one of the prime movers of that project mm. to Egypt. Egypt where they met Afrizim executives led by our brother or uh, something. Mm. And then the deal that finally gave back to the fifty million dollars paid to Geometric settled there. In fact, the presentation of Company Pazo received that plus. Mm. So what we had set out to do was to say that a sizable chunk of the power generated by geometrics will go to him by economic city okay. so that the companies, the industrial concerns coming there mm. will have steady power supply. The non-industrial concerns will have steady power supply. That was all part of the integrated thinking of the government at that time. Okay. But what we have heard today is that Chief Dalozo met with Governor Lesotho okay. and they discussed how to further the union by economics. Whatever terms Governor Nessot gave him, he didn't agree with it. And that because of that, Governor Nessot proceeded to sabotage the project and return the land. That are, you was privy already to, are you privy to the, those terms so that we can know what could have led to this kind of situation we are having? What time? Yes, I coming? have the. I, I was not at the meeting, mm. but I have the information from the person who attended the meeting. Okay. I know what happened. I know that the man may not want a lot of uh, publicity around this. Thing. That's why I'm not going to tell you specifically mm. what the governor requested for. Okay. Now, if you recall, when we were in this geometric power project problem, I kept on shouting two things. One, that actually Abia paid $3.56 million dollars to invest in geometrics. The governor and his people said it's not true, it's not true, it's not true. Mm. In fact, at the time the governor went to channel to deny knowing everything or anything about it, mm. he had a letter from Professor Bakanaji in his position while he told the lie that he told. And I said, no, sir. Okay. Please tell the people the truth. And I proceeded to release the data available to me, oh, yeah. which ultimately led to Geometry is coming public to say, yes, actually, Abia and, and, and Abia is actually appreciated. And they, they would have also appreciated if you had, uh, you know, told them exactly the terms, because people are really interested. Let's know the terms reached between the government, the governor the and the government, the so that we will know. Genica, it has never been my position to sabotage the government of Abia. No, it it this one is not about the government. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. It has always been my position to help them succeed, even without being part of their government. And I do not intend to ever be part of their government, come what may. Okay. But my point is this. If the government again proceeds to deny mm -hmm. that they didn't have that conversation with Chief D 
that law firm. Then you come, come up with into. the terms. Then I'll come up with everything. That is how I operate. Okay. Okay. I will make it. my facts clear. Mm. If you say no, it's not like that. And then I will now do what I have to do so that okay. the whole world will know that I'm the man of me that is lying and that all I care for is the welfare and well being of my people in Nigeria State. We'll be waiting for that day when you come up with those terms, right? Because we are going to just let just ask the government to deny. All right. Okay. That so the governor did not meet with that also mm. and that the governor did not make a request which that also turned down mm. and as a result the government orchestrated all those uh, shenanigans because I know the community was always in court mm. before then but you cannot sue government <laughs> on the basis of land use act it's just like what has happened to Chief Raymond Dalega mm. you cannot sustain a matter against the governor on the basis of land use act so whether somebody goes to appeal court supreme court or anywhere on the basis of land use act okay. the, the, the fact that you have a case in court does not mean anything okay all right let so us what is that is uh, what to revoke the CFO issued in view of that land thereby returning the land to the original owner okay all right and that was the sabotage he executed against Okay, Chief, it's time for us to open the phone lines because Adians will want to interact with you, ask you questions based on what we've raised here, the points we've raised here. Uh, my guest is uh, Chief John Oki Kalu, former Commissioner for Information and former Commissioner for Trade and Investment here in Adia State. It's time for you to be part of this discussion, and if you must join us, these are the numbers to call 08081 or 08116052949. Phone. You can also send your SMS on 090-6510-289. Please, when you're calling, be civil. Do not insult anybody. Okay. Hello? Good morning? Hello? Good morning? Okay. Let's take another call now. Hello? Give a Remain listed for life. Thank you so much. Welcome. Ex Excellent is my name. Yes. Okay. Let me okay. start this way. You cannot... Take exam for yourself and say magistrate. And it cannot be a judge in your own case. What am I trying to say? Um, the, 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 the person now saying that uh, I'm a uh, house of assembly, they are doing When PCP, the last um, uh, house of assembly, they passed more that if you're a woman, you want to inherit your father's property, even if you have four, six now in your family. After, after that, uh, uh, they close it. Okay, so excellent, excellent. Uh, let us not go back in time. Let us deal with the issue. The issue we are talking about is that the Abia State House of Assembly presently has refused to sworn in the lawmaker elect that should be representing the people of our bad North State constituency. And again, they are actually repealed the law, you know, mandating the state government to actually pay. Uh, pensions to former governors and deputies as well. So I want you to react to this. Uh, mm. That's welcome development. The uh, uh, best of the sense that work together. Yeah. Um, um, the past administration is uh, the past is that uh, how can how can a governor that we for every year invest our uh, uh, money and invest it? See, if you go to the house, you have to money there. The paid money. The investor in abroad, how about uh, here? Yeah. Now, coming to collect pension, the government has no pay pension here. But it's in Amos, we are saying something, they take care of the government, what do you do? That is what goes okay. around now. Right. So what is Thank happening you. now? The, 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 and the people that are so, so you are saying, government. hold on, excellent, so the yeah. road should continue. There shouldn't be a stop to it. You know, you know, there's no perfect plan. Okay. That, right. that, that's the moment. That's the moment of the uh, moment of the 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 the moment of the the moment of 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 I mean, the state assembly really? was locked at some point, you know, for about uh, six months, and uh, now you're crying foul for the same illegality that you perpetrated while in office. But that's not the issue. I, L I, am, not aware, mm. I am not aware. I am not aware of the state house of assembly being locked by the government of Okiji at any point in time in history. Never. 
Okay, let's take another if the, members of, if the members of the House voluntarily went on recess, mm. we never interfered okay. with that House. Okay, so please, please let's, tell let's him take another that call. his point is not excellent. No. Okay. He's not excellent with the okay. truth. Hello. Hello, good morning, welcome. Hello, good morning, Mr. Ginnika. Good morning, welcome. Thank you, sir. It's Mr. Kijoki. Okay. I'm calling from Benderoji. Go sir, ahead. Please, please, uh, Mr. Ginnika, I am still asking myself the face and the kind moral justification uh, your guest is using to analyze the issue we have in other states. Because I know, I know the issue of an economic uh, you know, project is a project that we don't have anything to talk about. This project was a, 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 is a project they used to, you know, a, 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 a squander at their, at their money. And how? I, am, I want to, I, how? I want uh, to ask you. Okay. Tell us yeah. how. I'm sure you have the facts, right? So tell us yeah, how they I'm use fine. how they use economic Enyimba uh, Economic City to squander their money. You have like 30 okay. seconds to do that. Okay, sir. Yeah. So uh, Enyimba Economic uh, Project was headed by the uh, the, the Sachin Ewog and uh, Governor Ibazu then promised at chance that he's going to finish the uh, Enyimba Economic uh, Project and he's he, he going to give about 20,000 uh, uh, employment on that uh, Enimba uh, project. And uh, at the end, they did not even start okay. that project. All right, thank they you. They did not even start that project. You talk of uh, okay. employing Adias, 20,000 okay. All right, thank you so much. Chief, you heard what he said, that you actually used the Enimba Economic City to squander Adias money. Did you do that? Please tell me, Mr. Chijioke that it is important that we don't play politics with everything. Adia State Government on the Ipazo did not invest any physical one kobo into any economic city. Our investment was in the area of the land, the value attached to the land given by the people of Adia State. Did you pay for so, the land, Chief? That is what I'm saying, okay. that our investment was in the area of the land, mm for which we were going to settle our people with about 3% of the shares. The, 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 the governor wanted them not to take money for their land because the, the city would still remain in their land. Mm -hmm. But instead, he moved for them to have shares in what they are doing okay. so that they will permanently benefit from any by economic city. The man talking about squandering money does not know that we did not vote one couple it was a private initiative led by Chief Galozo, who okay. invested a lot, millions in dollars, into that project. And okay. that's what Governor Lesotho has torpedoed okay. because of selfish reasons. All right, now to our Facebook page. This one is coming from Joseph Ndukwe. He said, Chief, please. He's, uh, uh, okay, so you can explain. Okay, I don't understand that uh, particular comment. Let's uh, go over to Machuku Kennedy. He said, uh, good morning, everyone in the studio. The passage of bill by Abia House of Assembly stopping ex governors and deputies from receiving pension is laudable and uh, and most welcome indeed. This current Abia Assembly uh, has proven to Abia's that they are not rubber stamp compared to what we witnessed in the previous administration. Thank you so much. Okay, Zeka Elvis, uh, you're saying, uh, irrespective of party affiliation and differences, I think it'd be wise for Abia PDP to give credit to the current administration for doing mostly what they failed to do. Let's appreciate the new government for the good job done so far because it can only get better. God bless us all. Well, Chief, I think uh, we should just leave it at that, but uh, let's take a cue from the last uh, comment there from Ezeka Elvis. Uh, in one minute, Chief, assess the level of performance of this government in terms of infrastructure and projects that are ongoing right now. If they do what we were not able to do, we will applaud them. Mm -hmm. But if they sit everything in the seat, continue borrowing money randomly. Mm. Oh, okay. We lost uh, Chief on the line there. And uh, we're actually out of time. Well, uh, I just hope you will be able to call back and uh, we'll finish up. <laughs> Okay, I think we have him back. Chief, quickly, we have 30 seconds to leave the studio. We are saying that if they do what we cannot do or did not do, they will applaud them. But when we see them, after today, 
a ranking member of the State House of Assembly confirmed to me mm. that they have given approval for a 150 billion naira in total loan to Governor Lesotho, and that excludes the reported Union Bank 45 billion and the reported settlement with UB of 35 billion. Okay. If they are borrowing generations of Adia citizens, generations unborn into poverty, we will not applaud that. Okay. Because, let, let. because if you are not careful, you can do good even while mortgaging. It's moving my children's children. Okay. So, I think for Mr. Zika, mm. go ahead. Okay. Let let me I think, uh, yes, uh, we are really out of time. Let me sincerely thank you, Chief John Oki Carlo, former commissioner here in Abia State, former commissioner for trade and investment, and also former commissioner here in Abia State for information. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate you. We'll have more time to talk with you on the platform sometime. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you so much. Well, that's the situation. It's time for, for us to leave the studio. Sincere thanks to all of you who listened in and who called in, who sent in your comments on our Facebook page, even on our SMS line. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Let's keep praying for our state and Nigeria to get better. And I'll see you again. My name is Ginika Olwa. Sincere thanks to my producer, Sam Sinezi. Stanko and Charles, those guys behind the camera, you're doing a very great job. I appreciate you. I'll see you again. Good morning.